expectations precede Budget 2018. A clear focus on the rural sector and an attempt to increase jobs is widely expected. But let's not forget the middle class. The salaried taxpayer who has been bearing most of the load of taxes also has a list of expectations from the union budget. And to speak on how the finance minister can increase disposable incomes for salaried employees, we are speaking today with Kuldeep Kumar, partner PwC India, and Suresh Sadagopan, founder Ladder 7 Financial Advisories. Welcome, gentlemen, uh, to primetime debate this evening where we're speaking about budget 2018. I'm going to start with you. Uh, Mr. Kumar, is there any real hope that there would be a significant change either in tax slabs or in exemptions uh, looking at the fact that there is a challenge to maintain fiscal targets? Absolutely, Tamanna, you are very right. Uh, while that, you know, the fiscal deficit is uh, controlling the fiscal deficit is one of the agenda of this government and which was also indicated by the prime minister or the finance minister recently in the media and also the oil prices are riding but nevertheless still the expectations from this budget are very very high from the salaried class and this is due to you know several facts and one of them is that um, um, you know this may perhaps be the last full-fledged budget of this government so some of the populism may find places find place in this budget and second is that uh, there are several long-term reforms which this uh, country has seen, be it the GST, be it uh, giving incentive to the digitized transaction. So we are, most, we are a lot of economic activity which perhaps earlier was taking place outside the economy will get into the formal economy. So all these long-term measures which has been taken are likely to push up the collection of the government. And then we should not forget the demonetization and this saw a great support from the public at large. So I think, you know, keeping all these factors in mind, perhaps this is the opportune time even for the government to cheer up the, cheer the public at large. But uh, now how he will do the, you know, this job, uh, that is only the time will tell. But there are several expectations this year from the budget, from the salaried class, you know, which, 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 are, which are there. Okay, uh, Mr. Sadakopan, if you could uh, highlight some of those expectations because we have had uh, small increases even in the last budget in tax slabs. Um, some exemptions uh, maybe will be increased. But you know, every time there is a small increase, we celebrate it. Effectively, per person, it doesn't turn out to be much when you compare it to rising costs and inflation. What can be done beyond, you know, just a piecemeal or a token increase? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Kumar has summed up the whole uh, landscape very well. Uh, the government can potentially do something for the middle class and uh, the government should do something for the middle class. Uh, in view of uh, whatever they have undergone uh, in this last one year, they have stoically borne uh, a lot of the initiatives from the government and uh, the middle class is now, it's payback time for the middle class. So there are two portions to it. One is uh, in a falling interest rate regime, uh, the middle class is expecting some something uh, of, a, of a kind of a shock from the government. Uh, I can only uh, probably speculate as to what can come in the budget. So something can come in the budget, something may come after that. So there are two, three things uh, in, the, uh, in the context of the uh, low uh, earnings which people are getting because of the interest rate reduction. One of them is, uh, see, one of the things which people uh, very much like to contribute is the public provident fund. However, the public provident fund per person is uh, uh, restricted to something like 1.5 and there has been a clamor for uh, some time now that that limit has to be either increased or, uh, uh, I mean, uh, most probably uh, it can only be increased. It cannot be made uh, like NPS, I mean, any amount of contribution. So. That could be one thing which we can probably look forward to to some maybe some level of tinkering. Uh, the second thing is uh, regarding the tax free bonds. It was a very very popular vehicle, and it gave a sustained income for people for a long period of time, like 10 to 20 years. So in this uh, period of falling interest rate, I think that is one of the things that uh, uh, people are really looking forward to, especially people who are at the end of their working lives and who want a sustained income. The other third thing uh, which people are looking forward to is uh, pensions and annuities uh, are currently taxed. So if you have been con contributing to NPS or any other uh, pension or you are receiving a pension from the government or any other entity, so that is going to be taxable today. And uh, there has been 
there has been a clamor for uh, pensions to be or annuities to be made tax free so these are probably three things at least a uh, couple of them may see the light of the day is my hope you know i want to uh, come to the point uh, mr sadgopan uh, uh, made and i really like that quote it's uh, payback time for the middle class uh, and uh, mr kumar you also highlighted that you know tax base has increased that's the claim from the government uh, gst um, collections have also improved this month uh, you know right in time for the budget uh, how much and what in real terms effective terms can the government do to put more money in people's pockets to push that spending power i think one of the easiest way to do this to, to do this would be uh, that ki they increase the basic exemption limit now obviously the question would come to what extent because the last year the this has not been raised for the last couple of years so the basic exemption limit may be raised for uh, 3 lakh rupees and then for the salaried class you know which i talked about a short while ago so they have a very high hope from this budget and there have been several demands from this section of uh, taxpayers which have been pending for the last so many years just to give an example um, until 2004 and 5 salaried class used to get this standard deduction and reintroduction of the same you know is something which the salaried class is looking for then the medical reimbursement tax free medical reimbursement and currently the limit is 15000 rupees and you know this limit was set some time back in 1988 1998 1999 so this requires a revision you take the lta you know the present day job you see there is quite stress yeah. and presently the lta is exempt in a block twice in a block of 4 years why not to make it on a yearly basis and then the then the journeys which are covered are the within india travel is covered why not to make the international travel also eligible for the lta exemption so you know um, so so i think this can very quickly put up the more money into the pocket of the for pocket of the uh, taxpayers so i believe that you know one of the theme if you will see last year what happened you know those who were earning between 50 lakhs and 1 crore they were slapped with a additional uh, surcharge of 10% i mean you know the those who were earning more than 1 crore so they already are you know paying the surcharge of 15% now you know if you will see the government one of the thing which government has been also been trying to address is the gap between richer and poor also get bridged up so if not all the tax payer but particularly you know the lower income group say somebody you know someone who are earning less than 10 lakh rupees absolutely some sort of a you know um, uh, they, they need money in their hands and something would definitely it looks like would come into the hands of those people but those who are in the higher group you know it still you know it it still is a challenge in a way that you know although if you will see that in the present uh, presently you know a lot of people are getting the notices from the uh, tax uh, authorities and be it the if they are having any overseas investment or they are having done any cash transaction in the past so the government has whole lot of information now based on this information the tax authorities are verifying those transaction so what government is trying to do is that ki the tax base increases and then which puts up a best case for a reduction in in in, in reducing the tax rate so when the government will get this confidence we are absolutely going to see that some sort of a you know a tax relief getting into the hands of the common man and um, few more thing i want to you know talk about for example the uh, the atc limit you know which is currently set up at 150000 and if you will see that uh, you know there are several items which are covered there in beat the contribution to the provident fund beat to the contribution to the ppf your lic premium etc and even the tuition fee or even the principal repayment of housing loan is also covered there in so presently if you will see the setup someone who is have taken a housing loan or who is an employee and contributing to the provident fund so you know most of the portion of this saving uh, limit is consumed by the provident for a repayment of a housing loan so this also merit for increasing the limit from 150000 to 250000 and we should not forget that ki india still does not have a very solid social security nps is there the provident fund is there but i think that encouraging you know you know the tax payers or the people at large to save for the long term uh, as well is one of uh, the need of the r which you know uh, the government need to think about You know, I want to talk about uh, uh, long-term capital gains tax as well in this uh, context, and I'll come to Mr. Kumar first on that because um, there is talk that uh, long-term capital gains tax, uh, uh, you know, uh, could uh, be increased from one year to three years. In fact, there were recommendations made uh, to this extent, and this comes at a time when, after demonetization, a lot of money has come back into banks. As a result, a lot of money has also been invested, a significant amount in equity-linked schemes, etc. or back into the share markets uh 
would this be advisable? What kind of an impact would this have? Well, you really, you you really touch. It's very sensitive, actually, you know, and um, and this perhaps maybe, you know, when my personal take on this is that, for example, you know, the elections are going to take place in uh, four states, which are uh, you know dominated by the farmers, and uh, that section, you know, uh, of the society is definitely uh, the government is going to do something for them. Now, if they have to, you know, do something for them, from where they will bring in the money? And having said that, this uh, you know long-term capital gain, whether it is increasing the holding period presently from one year to two or three years or probably you know putting up uh, some sort of a uh, taxing those capital gains or even you know uh, exempting them up to a certain threshold for example so that you know the uh, the lower income group you know who are getting attracted to the market or who are investing into the mutual fund so their return does not get impacted and, and you know in the present scenario if you see that the interest rates are declining and so it is very important that you know the disposable income in the hands of the uh, in the hands of uh, individuals needs to needs to go up so while those who are investing in the equity markets the higher income group individuals or the rich individual i may, I may if, if i call them so it may possible that it may be you know uh, it may happen that probably uh, government think of taxing them at a at some sort of a you know uh, rate so that they whereby they garner some some money to extend the benefit to the poorer section of the society Okay, Mr. Sadhgopan, uh, do you think it's a good idea uh, to uh, you know tinker with the LTGC at this point? Yeah, uh, my view is that see, as far as equities are concerned, it is uh, to be seen as a long-term vehicle. I mean, as uh, financial advisors, we suggest equities to be invested with a five-year uh, time period or more. So, and if that is really the case, uh, there is no real case of a long-term capital gain after uh, twelve months. Uh, on one hand, uh, as far as debt instruments are concerned, we are uh, taxing after three years. I mean, long-term capital gain kicks in after three years. Uh, there is, in my opinion, this is my personal opinion. Uh, my personal opinion is that if people are really looking at equities as a long-term vehicle, they uh, they should not really matter at all. So why should people keep on trading and uh, why should people invest today and one year down the line, why should they uh, take out the money? Uh, my opinion is that it should not really affect people who are uh, true investors. Okay, um, you know, I want to talk a bit about affordable housing and Mr. Kuldeep Kumar touched upon it when he said that everyone is, everything is bunched into ATC, including uh, your, uh, you know, uh, principal amount uh, of uh, your house repayment, etc. Um, but looking at the push for affordable housing, Mr. Suresh, what should the government do yes. to really incentivize people? Uh, see, um I'm going to answer your question slightly tangentially. Uh, the only problem as far as affordable housing is, see, uh, probably this affordable housing may work in uh, certain other places apart from uh, Mumbai. But in Mumbai, I mean, uh, within the city limits of Mumbai, there is uh, there is not much uh, really available uh, below one group. So it is off the limits of uh, affordable housing. So that will be, uh, that'll be uh, true for maybe other uh, A-class cities as well. So affordable housing, they probably have to really look at the uh, look at what is the definition of affordable housing for especially the metro cities, and accordingly craft incentives for uh, metro cities. Probably there is a two-tier structure which they can uh, think of. I don't know what they can actually do for uh, metros, but I, I think they can think of a two-tier structure or simply increase the slab of affordable housing up to one crore. You know, uh, Mr. Kumar, there has been uh, an interest subvention scheme in the past to push affordable housing and that has, uh, there's no real need to wait for the budget for that. That push has uh, gone there. It has led to more projects, uh, you know, in the affordable housing category being created. But is it enough at this point? Well, I think that, you know, um, uh, two things I want to talk about that. Now see that you know government also talked about the smart cities and today all the big metros like Delhi, Mumbai or you know all the capital uh, towns they are having a very heavy pressure of uh, population because of the employment opportunities or the other opportunities. Now definitely you know keeping in with the uh, the, 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 the cost etc you know the uh, two days in the two days time the uh, the scope or the uh, what is covered under the affordable housing the capital limit may be increased but you know if you will see that uh, practically how many projects are actually getting completed on time 
So although although the data has been you know introduced and then you know government has taken several steps to push up the builders to uh, deliver the possession on time. Now if you will see in the, in the tax scheme to give incentive to the taxpayer, now presently the limit is two lakh. If you are buying a house and if you are you know occupying yourself, the interest repayment you make the limit is two lakh. Now. any interest which you pay in the pre construction period i mean when the builder is constructing the house the interest is accumulated and that is allowed as a deduction in five equal installments beginning from the year in which the construction is completed now but this but when this accumulated interest as a installment is allowed as a deduction this is also counted along with the other normal interest which is payable for that year yes. within the overall limit of 2 lakh so in my view i think that the fact that now the builders are taking little longer to complete the project and there is a higher interest charge so i think it would be good that the government should um, uh, increase the government should increase the interest limit from 2 lakh to 3 lakh rupees and second is that if you will remember the last year budget uh, you know the uh, the government has put a cap of 2 lakh uh, on the loss which you can uh, on the loss which you can set off yeah. uh, from house property from the other uh, other sources of income mm -hmm. so you know anyone who is having more than one house so even if that house is not uh, for example uh, rented out or you know now there is a trend of a nuclear families and the families are staying you know children are staying in one house and the parents are staying in another house so this has really caused a very hardship to those individuals who are having more than one house and then there is also you know um, uh, if for example if you are staying in your own house and during the year for example you are transferred to another location so where for part of the uh, year you have rented out your house so according to the current provisions you end up paying taxes on a notional rent for the period even when you were staying in your own house so i think two things should be done first the notional basis of taxation should be done away so you know where one is having a house where the parents are staying so those should not be unnecessarily you know paying tax on that and second is that the limit of you know capping it 2 lakh that should also be done away with because ultimately you know it is all impacting those individuals who were earlier investing into the housing sector so even those who are having money wanted to invest in that sector are not investing in that so so i think this this measure if you are taken that actually will give a push but i agree with you that you know affordable housing this is also one of the dream of this government or prime minister so so something would also happen in that direction um you know i'm just uh, going to round off now this conversation with a, a top 3 uh, wish list from both of you and i'll start with mr sadakopan uh, what are the top 3 things you would like to see uh, which will sort of ease the burden for the salaried middle class perhaps put more money in their pockets so one is a hike in the standard deduction uh, from 2 and 1/2 lakhs to maybe 3 3 and 1/2 lakhs uh, the second is uh, atc limit from 1 and 1/2 lakhs to maybe 2 and 1/2 lakhs or uh, they open up a, a another subsection under atc where insurance or uh, principal of the housing or some other portions go outside of the AT, typical atc limit uh, so in effect i mean we are uh, going to see some increase in that that's what we are hoping for and the third thing uh, which i am really hoping for, uh, for for in the interest of the investor is tax free bonds uh, making a comeback uh, this year so those are the top three things i would wish for so kumar what's on your list well uh, you know increasing the basic exemption limit and you know increasing the medical reimbursement limit or introducing the reintroduction introduction of the standard deduction for the salaried class is absolutely going to cheer them up but i think one thing which i have no we've not talked about that is the you know something for the senior citizens you know this is the category which is the worst hit and you know the interest rates are declining and uh, you know they cannot invest into the riskier investment to improve their uh, or to increase their uh, uh, return on the investment i think you know giving a deduction for interest up to 1 lakh for them and as well you know they, they should also be given some sort of a uh, deduction for their medical expenditure such as routine medical expenditures such as consultation fees physiotherapy you know which will give them to which will give them really a, uh, some sort of a money in their hand to maintain their uh, you know day to day living and the second thing you know the, the third thing which i want to uh, talk about is that nps if you see you know presently it is exempt the corpus is exempt one time withdrawal at a time of retirement up to 40% of the corpus so while you can withdraw up to 60% i think this limit of 40% should also be raised to 60% so which will really give a uh, level playing field to the nps vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, investment into the provident fund 
All right, uh, we leave it at that. But thank you so much uh, for speaking with us, Kuldeep Kumar and Suresh uh, Sadakupan, listing out uh, what they hope that this budget will bring uh, for the salaried middle class. And in a budget which is expected to focus on uh, rural sector, on jobs, very crucial areas, let's hope the finance minister uh, will think uh, of this section of society as well.